stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of nonstop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Jerry and hi everybody. I'm Patty Borwitz and this is the 1322nd edition of Motorsports Unlimited. Today we're turning the calendar back more than 20 years to detail a nearly forgotten but very important piece of technology. Our regular viewers probably know Bill is often concerned that sometimes advanced technology falls through the cracks of history either because supporting technology wasn't ready or the idea fell out of fashion. The piece of technology we're going to talk about today is desmodromic valves. There is nothing new about desmodromic valves. The idea has been around since the turn of the last century, but making them and making them work isn't easy. The first real successful use of desmodromic valves was by Mercedes-Benz in their W196 Formula One cars in 1954 and 1955. The 1955 Mercedes Desmodromic Valve F1 cars won 9 of 12 races. The engine was supposed to have been so complicated and advanced, including direct cylinder fuel injection. When the man who designed it passed away, Mercedes couldn't get the engines to run again, and an example still sits in the Mercedes Museum. Whether this is myth or legend is open to debate. There is no question, however, about the success of the Mercedes W196 Grand Prix cars. Yet, they never put the technology into production. As far as we know, only one manufacturer ever successfully used desmodromic valves in production engines. The famous Desmo Ducati motorcycles. Available even today, a Desmo Duke is a prized motorcycle to own. They have won uncountable races and carried their riders reliably all over the world in street form. The technology is fascinating and with modern production techniques, practical for production street motorcycles. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. Remember, this was taped more than 20 years ago, and Motorsports Unlimited looked much different then, as did the Ducati motorcycles you will see. Yet, the Desmodromic Valve Ducati still stand alone, and if you want to see how technology is done, the Desmo Dukes are still what you have to examine. Let's get started. Today we've got a high-tech show for you, sure to delight those that value leading-edge engineering. We're talking Desmodromic Valves. Uh, those are valves without valve springs, I think. I wonder how they do that. Well, we'll find out as we examine the exotic Italian motorcycle mark Ducati. Of course, when I say we, I mean our lovely ladies of motorsport. Hi, I'm Kim Donahue. I'm Kim Carlson, and boy, do we have something trick to show you today. Start your VCRs for this one. We're going to show you a way of totally eliminating those troublesome valve springs. Kim Carlson, now we've got the good stuff. What do I mean? The, um, oh, I forgot the name. What's the name? Desmo Dramatic Valve. Desmo Tramic. <laughs> what is it? Desmo Tramic. Not I can't think of it. Desmodromic. Desmodromic valves, exactly correct. And let me just give you, uh, let me just give you a little quick piece of history here first. Uh, Desmodromic valves were originally patented in 1914 by the Delage Company in France. No one ever really made any real practical application of this desmodromic valve technology for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is that as valve spring technology, now remember, at the, I, I should explain that like at the turn of the century, the most troublesome part about engines that were just beginning to evolve, and the engines at that time didn't rev up to more than seven, 800 RPM. And one of the most troublesome things about it was the valve springs. Valve springs kept breaking and going soft, and then the, the valves would hit the pistons and all that. So the valve springs were a real problem. So people were looking for other ways of closing these valves, or, or a way to solve this. Well, this desmodromic valve mechanism, which it has one cam opens the valve, one cam closes the valves, no valve springs, uh, was appealing because of all the valve spring problems. However, about the time it was developed, 
the valve spring technology had developed more too and it was able to handle the higher RPM. So it seems like the valve spring technology has always been just barely one step ahead of any real need for desmodromic valves, except in the Mercedes-Benz uh, automobile company, their Grand Prix, Formula One Grand Prix cars, and I'm going to give the, it was early 50s, up until 55 when they retired, but like 1953, 54, 55, the Formula One Mercedes Grand Prix cars had a desmodromic valve straight A, and it was absolute world beater. I mean, nobody could touch them. The engines were so complicated that the person that designed them, after they retired the cars and put them in a museum, uh, the person that designed them would once a year bring them out for the press, and they'd do little laps and everything, and after he passed on, no one else could ever really get the engines to run right. They were extremely complicated engines. That's been the only other real use of desmodromic valves over the years, and there have been no production vehicles with desmodromic valves, with the exception of Ducati motorcycles. Now, do I have that about right? Yeah, that sums it right up pretty good. Okay, you knew about the Mercedes-Benz thing? Yes, the Mercedes was originally, originally uh, they were the first ones to really do it, and then uh, Ducati came along very shortly thereafter and started to use it on their motorcycles then. Not, not their production bikes? Not their production bikes on their road racers. Right, and the road race, the, the factory race bikes, right. but as far as production vehicles, to my knowledge, Ducati is the only company ever. Right. As far as production vehicles, you're right. This is the only manufacturer right now to use dozen dynamics. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at this and explain exactly what it is. Uh, girls, can you all see? Christine, you might want to come down this way a little bit. Just step forward and, and uh, uh, Kim out this way. So you can, here's what we're going to be looking at, this piece right here. And Chuck, you're going to do the best you can with this, right? <laughs> okay. Now, what we have here is this is the valve. That's a that's the uh, intake valve right here. This is the intake port. The carburetor would be mounted out here. And this is where we have to draw through. That's the door that has to be opened in order to let the intake mixture go in, the air and fuel go in. And this, by the way, we were talking about earlier about these things now being belt driven instead of a bevel gear drive. This is what we're talking about. This is a belt comes from the engine. That was what was inside of those things that I pointed out. The belt comes from the engine, turns this. I'm going to turn this back, and I hope I'm not moving it on you, Chuck. We doing all right? Okay, he's nodding his head. Uh, now, as we turn this, you see the valve open? Now, the way that opens is that internally there's a cam. I'm going to tilt this up. Now, can you see way inside there the other, at the other end of this? Can you guys look in there and see that? And that's what's pushing the valve open. This rocker arm is pushing the valve open. Now normally now normally you'd have a valve spring in here, right? Mm -hmm. Remember? And in fact I hope right now as we're talking we've got a little glimpse of when we were at AEI engines. They had the big block Chevy on the dyno and you could clearly see the push rods pushing the valves open and the spring then pushes the valve closed. The, the rocker arm has to overcome the pressure of the spring. Push it down. As soon as the, 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 the cam comes off the lobe, the valve spring pushes the valve back closed again. But if you'll notice there's no valve spring here. Mm -hmm. Alright? So as this thing closes, do you see what's closing it? You see there's a rocker arm down here. You see the second rocker arm? That rocker arm actually comes up and closes. And the way it works, I'm going to turn it sideways. Now if you notice, this is a cam in here. And if you'll notice, normally a cam looks like this, like my thumb, and I hope, I'm not, mm -hmm. I hope that's visible. Normally it looks like this, that it just bumps the valve open and most of the time it's closed. But if you'll notice in this one, most of the cam is up. Because, most, because when it's up like that, that's when the valve is closed. Now I'm going to turn this and you can watch how that actually works. You see the rock arm down there? Mm -hmm. So you've got one cam, this cam closes the valve, and this cam back in there, it's mm -hmm. more of a traditional looking cam, that opens it. Now I would suggest that's a pretty complicated mechanism. Would you agree, Kimmy? Yeah. I agree. Okay. Interestingly, have I got this about right and jump right in if I don't have it, yes. if I didn't explain yeah, you're it doing, right. You're doing very well. Okay, I'm doing very well. Now, as complicated as this is, and this is a complicated technology, what kind of RPM do they, what do they redline these bikes at? Roughly the race bikes are running about 11,000 RPM. The street bikes are 9,000 RPM. Okay, now you would say to yourself, now wait a minute, that doesn't sound like that high of an RPM because there are many machines around now that rev to 13, 14,000 RPM with valve springs. So once again, we have the same thing. This, the valve spring technology has kind of reached past the need for the desmodromic valves, sort of. This particular engine, I would suggest, really needs the desmodromic valves because this is a two-valve engine. Now you see what I'm talking about, yeah. Kimmy? And, and what kind of a head is that, Kim? Uh, <laughs> wait, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, what kind of a head design? Hemi. Uh, say it again. Hemi. 
There you go. It's a Hemi head design, uh, and it's a two valve. Now, two valves. The, the, one of the reasons they've gone to four valve engines, two intake valves and two exhaust valves, is because two little valves are a lot lighter than one big valve, and the valve springs have an easier time closing them. On a two valve head like this, the valves are fairly large and heavy to, in order to get enough valve area, get enough intake area, and they become heavy. And on a two valve engine like this, this is of great value having the desmodromic valve, so you can rev these things up efficient, efficiently up to 10,000 RPM. Uh, They've even complicated it more than that. What are we standing in front of over here? Okay, what we have here is the 851. This is basically the latest in development that Ducati has right now. It has a four valve head on it, uh, fuel injected and water cooled with uh, electronic uh, fuel injection on it. Yeah, this Once again, please remember, this was taped more than 20 years ago. Ducati, like all manufacturers, has bigger, badder machines today, but they are still the only one with desmodromic valves. Same thing on the exhaust side over here. Rocker arm to open, rocker arm to close it, cam to open, cam to close it. That's to do two valves. Now, four valves, multiply that times, have I got it about right? That's right, multiply by two. You have double overhead cam, now we have two cams inside of there and all the rocket arms that go along with it, it gets quite complicated. Right, this is a really complicated piece now, and it, actually this is fairly new, this isn't something, now the, the two valve does most of, oh, I'm sorry, Kim, the two valves here have been, we're in very close quarters, folks. Uh, the the uh, two valve has been, uh, Desmodromic has been around how many years? The two valve Desmodromic in- For production. R r oh, for production? Well, actually, right in the uh, early 60s, uh, they started to do uh, production models on okay. single cylinders. Okay, so and we're talking actually a great, quite a few number of years. Yes. All right, but this, with four valves per cylinder desmodromic valves, is how in production? No, they just started in 19... Well, 86 was the first year they started racing it. 1989 was really the first year they put it in production. So this has only been a couple of years now. It's only a few years, right? All right, and this is very complicated, and we're gonna try to do this. I shouldn't say this in advance. Folks, if we don't get the shot, it's because we couldn't get it, we didn't get enough light. But what I want the girls to see is, I want to look right down this fuel injector throat, and the way this works, remember, this is a V-twin engine, so you've got one fuel injector going this way, and buried in underneath here somewhere is another fuel injector for the other side. That's cylinder. right, buried kind of down inside of here. It's hard to see, but there is another fuel injector, one for each cylinder. Okay. Okay, and what I want you guys to see, if you look right down that throat, I'm going to open up the throttle so you can see. And girls, tell me what you see down there. Now, first of all, you can see it's a total straight through shot, uh, a total straight into the cylinder. Uh, give me an idea of what's down there. Kim Carlson? Two um, valves, is it a valve? That's, those are valves, exactly. You can see the two intake valves, and you can see them right straight through. It's a straight through shot. I hope we had the shot on camera, folks. I don't know if there's enough light in there to get it. We're going we're gonna to try it. Uh, this is pretty exotic, pretty sophisticated stuff, very much along the lines of when you talk about Maseratis and Ferraris and things like that. But it's not just, obviously, the thing that draws me to it is the desmodromic valves, because I really have wanted to explain that to our audience for some time. That's a level of sophistication that we were ready to get through after being through all the other ways of the numbers of valves per cylinder and all that, uh, and the overhead cams and the single overhead cams and double overhead cams as opposed to push rod engines. Now we've got desmodromic valves. Go ahead. Why haven't uh, these type of valves been used in other production vehicles? Is it because of what you said earlier that the, the springs have kind of kept up with technology or wh why don't they use them? Good question. Two reasons. Number one, this is very expensive. Yeah. You can't really do this on a bread and butter motorcycle or bread and butter automobile. This is a, that's a lot of machining, that's a lot of parts, that's a lot of engineering. It's very expensive to do. And beyond that, quite frankly, the valve spring technology has always seemed to keep maybe Six months, have I, you agree or disagree? If you right. want to jump in, you know, please, let me get you to face okay. the camera, okay? The, uh, you're right. The valve springs have kind of kept up with it, and it is a very expensive uh, manufacturing process that they have to go through to put all that into that cylinder head. I will say this, though. The cam timing, they can make it very, very precise, and they can actually control the valves a little bit better with the dozen dramic and ha actually have a better filling of the cylinder. Uh, with their cam timing profiles that they can use with a dozen dramatic valves. Right, I think you're exactly right, girls. And one of these days we're going to do a show about that, this whole thing of cam timing and, and what you can do if you have the kind of luxury that you have here uh, where you can precisely control the closing and opening rates. Uh, you can run it a little closer to the limits on overlap. Is that what you're suggesting? Right, because the cam manufacturer always has to deal with the valve spring and valve float with the valve springs. You can't really just slam a valve open and let it He bounce. cannot depend on the valve following the cam profile perfectly. Right, right. Whereas we can with desmodromic valves. With valve. desmodromic, we can, it, it has no choice but to follow the cam profile. We're almost out of time, but let's squeeze in a technical review of... Desmodromic valves. <laughs>